do. If you don't call me in a day, I don't think you'll be okay. And you know, I laughed about it. So that day, because she had said she wasn't feeling well, I left her. I didn't tell her anything. I didn't call her. I didn't. She took a deep breath. And that was it. And I picked up my call to send it the WhatsApp chat to her. Oh, she, what we're looking for? We've seen it. The message was delivered and sent, but it wasn't delivered. Calling her name and saying, Oluwa, she, get up. You can't go in there. It's dead people that they take there. Get up. Get up. So when um, we are about to start the meeting, the bosses on the call were not too sure who to start the meeting. So somebody said, um, Timaj, start the meeting. Timaj said, um, Shola, start the meeting. Shola. So I think at some point, somebody was able to gather confidence and then start, started the meeting. I didn't know they were going through hell. I did not know. I was just crying for myself that they abandoned me. An appointment. One day, all of us. Oh, I'm Oh, I say, 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 oh, were excited and I remember I wrote 17 years gone forever to go. Both of us are born in the month of May. She celebrated in fourth. May is 23rd. We wanted to go together as a family in um, August out of the country for vacation. But I insisted that um, I don't think I want us to go because of um, COVID and that the fact that most people who had COVID were people returning from a journey. So let us stay put in Nigeria. And she did agree. And we planned somewhere we will go within the country. So she extended, she ought to have gone for a leave. So she extended it. She extended when to go so that the children can be on holiday and all of us can have a time to travel together because it has become a yearly culture that during summer we all travel together for vacation. My mom died July 1st last year, 2021. Of course, I told Shenwa about it, came here about it. And then the preparation started. We, before then, Shenwa was even planning that um, maybe it was around 10 that did birthday. Um, and now we were, of course, exchanging happy birthday. And she said, ah, that our children are getting to the age when we met. That's around 12, 13 years. And I said, that's true. That She now suggested that uh, we should have a gathering, go out together with our family and the children and everything. And I said, I find that that's a good idea. But I will have to involve Kemi. Kemi lives outside Lagos, Nevada. And so she was walking, wanting to clear a table. She was passionate about her family. Very, very passionate about her children, passionate about her husband. After a series of tests, the hospital decided they had to do a major surgery, very major one. I said, no. She will say yes. I said, no. She didn't say yes. I said yes. She said yes. You have to face it once and for all. I understand the children called themselves, they formed a group, so I learned. 
They said they agreed on the group that the surgery had to be in August, that I shouldn't be whipping up sentiment, that my excuses were not genuine enough. And then I said, well, God, if this is your will, let it be done. On a Tuesday, just a day before our passing, uh, our mom's twin sister was to have a surgery. And I, being a universal donor, volunteered to donate blood for her. And secondly, I was just like her being there. She had a ethic work schedule, so she had to stay back. And so I was given a regular update of what was going on there, stayed back, donated blood. And um, she, didn't, she just told me I'm feeling a bit dizzy. I said, go and rest. And that was it. The day before the transition to eternal glory, that day, the day before was August 10, my mom twin sister had a procedure, a major procedure, and uh, myself, Samuel, and Dukweolu, she was husband, we were all there. So on the morning of the tent, they wheeled me to the theater. I didn't know whatever happened thereafter. After the sources of the procedure, she, you know, usually when they bring somebody out of the theater, the person will first come around, but it's not totally. So we saw, we saw that her fingers were moving, her feet, we called her, she responded, she go, you understand. We created a platform, a WhatsApp platform, just family, where we were, you know, sharing news about what was happening and all that. So I just said, to God be the glory. And it was a success. And uh, she was said, Hallelujah, Jehovah, Tor, and Do. She now said, We will see the goodness of God. You know, when I read that, I wanted to respond that she on this statement is inconclusive. But I must have been overwhelmed and, you know, did tell with some other happenings around that it should have been. We will see the goodness of God in the land of the living. She just said, we will see the goodness of God. And you know, she was a Christian. She was a pastor. The day before she passed on, we were still gisting on the phone and she told me, Yabi I'll be coming to your office tomorrow. And the pastor did told me about the Amala you bought for him. I'll be coming down to eat my Amala. Son, um, three days before it happened, uh, normally we have our leaders meeting and um, I can't remember, some people had done some, um, some celebration, so uh, it was my turn. And so it was a Sunday, we had a nice time after the service, we bantered after discussing um, Jamin issues about the church. I didn't think of anything because she was very, very gay, convivial on that day, so there was no, no premonition of anything. So. She was not sick. I spoke with her a day before that day. She was not sick. She did not complain about anything to me. She knows I work in the hospital. There are times we talk about regular checkup and all that. But there was no major sickness. Beyond the text message, we spoke earlier in the day. She was an high spirit. In fact, she said she was, that day was on a Tuesday. And she told me Friday was supposed to be her last day before she commences leave. So she was supposed to commence her leave on Monday. And she said, oh, she too, maybe she would want to come and come and do some medicals. Left home that Tuesday, quarter to nine. That's quarter to seven. And I came back home quarter after seven. And so when I, immediately I stepped into her apartment, she was in the sitting room, she was walking, 
and I can't, I can never forget. I, I, I did my hand like this. I said, Oh, you are really dizzy. You told me you were dizzy. I asked you to go and sleep. You are still walking here. It's obvious you are dizzy. You know what? I've donated blood and they said we should not involve in anything, uh, tasking, no rigorous activity. So I'm going into the room to, to sleep. And I left her. I didn't even participate. It was a Tuesday. I didn't even participate in Bible study that evening. It was a Tuesday. So we had a meeting. In the morning of that day, she had mentioned that she wasn't feeling well and that if anything required her attention, we should, you know, call her. So usually I'll call him almost every day. In fact, there was a day I called her and she said, uh, you, if you don't call me in a day, I don't think you'll be okay. And, you know, I laughed about it. So that day, because she had said she wasn't feeling well, I left her. I didn't tell her anything. I didn't call her. I didn't. So, but my intention was that I'll call her in the evening and ask how she was doing. But to my surprise, we had a 3 p.m. meeting on that day and she was talking with life. She was, she was okay. And I sent, when we finished the meeting, she contributed very well to the meeting and the meeting went well. It was a success. And then I sent her a chat. I said, how, I, I know you are feeling better now because, you know, you came to the meeting. And she said she's not really feeling better yet. I, I, so I, I told her that, okay, so why did, you, why did you come to the meeting? She said that she couldn't leave us, you know, that she had to be in the meeting. And she walked in, she came into the room around, I think, 10.30, if I'm correct, 10.30 or 11.30. And I looked at her and I said, Oluwa Sheon. You told me you're feeling dizzy. Why would you walk this late again? She smiled. She told me. She said, Bobo, ah, just two days more. I will sleep for you on Monday. You will be scared. She laid down beside me. And she slept. And give it to Sheon. If she lies down on the bed in less than five minutes, she's sound asleep. Because I had slept earlier, I, I woke up, I checked her, and I realized there was nothing abnormal about her breathing, nothing, nothing in any way to give me any concern. So I just felt, this lady is tired, she needs to sleep, she will be fine. Some couple of weeks before then, there was a particular transaction that myself and she were working on, and um, she was always calling me every day to confirm what the update was. So a day before she passed, she sent me a message on WhatsApp to confirm the status of, of, um, of the transaction. And I said, we are still trying to get, um, we are still trying to get updates from the center map. So the, the, the morning that she passed, that was when the transaction was successful. And I picked up my call to send it, a WhatsApp chat to her, uh, show what we're looking for. We've seen it. The message was, Deliver, um, sent, but it wasn't delivered. So on the morning of the tent, they wheeled me to the theater. I didn't know whatever happened thereafter. The surgery was done on 10th August. So we woke up in the morning. I woke up 5 a.m. I was ready to go to the farm. And um, I informed her that I was traveling. And she, she said, okay, dressed up 5 a.m. And, and I just got downstairs. And um, bearing in mind, we have one naming ceremony in church that same day. And I was wondering if I traveled and if there's traffic or anything, I don't come back on time. I can't trust the data on my phone for clarity because we're to have that naming that same day. So I just aborted the journey. I just said I wasn't going. So I just gave the key to the driver, told him all we needed to do, and I stayed back. I just went back upstairs. This is our routine. When she's working from home, she wakes up 6 o'clock. By 6.30, she 
She's in the living room, arrange all our stuff for work. We have devotion, and by seven on the dot, she will have started walking. So she came out of the room, 6 a.m., and she saw me in the sitting room, and she hugged me, and she was happy I didn't travel again. And um, she went into the kitchen to get some of our stuffs, our usual water, tea, and something else that she had. She has prepared the table. And from that kitchen, and she screamed my name. And she said, Bobo, Bobo, I'm not feeling fine. I said, what's the matter? I said, I'm feeling dizzy again. And gently, I laid her down in the sitting room, got a soft pillow for her head. I just said, relax. She said, give me water. So we looked at each other's eyes because just a month earlier on, a mutual friend that we really love, late Owolabi Odekunle, made the same request. And after that, just went into coma. So we look at each other's eyes. I said, can I sprinkle the water? She said, you may. And I did. I, I was sprinkling the water. And I noticed that the interval started reducing to be like, do it again, do it again. So I became a bit concerned. And uh, I called our family physician immediately and said, Sheung is not feeling bad. Our road is not motorable. I can't take her. Please come. Because the doctor was about five minutes away from us. But it took about 15 minutes for him to come. I kept calling. I kept calling. And when the doctor showed up in our, sitting, in our living room, I stepped a bit aside and he looked for a vein. And saw vein immediately, immediately, immediately he was able to see vein immediately. I just became relaxed that she was just tired, that she had overworked herself. And they gave her that drip, called the girls out because the nurses that came were quite uh, not on the tall side. And they assisted so that the drip can easily just go. You know, you needed height so that it can easily go in and... They did that. And I quickly went to get my car. When I saw that the car, the road is a bit motorable. And by the time I came back, they gave her, they wanted to give her the second one because she took that first one. And by the time they wanted to give her the second one, she, she made a nurse and the doctor was like, oh, sorry, 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 sorry. took a deep breath and that was it and the doctor started doing the um, what is it called uh, CPR pumping speaking in tongues this has been our doctor for 17 years as well and when he did it for a while my, my word was spinning out muttered scriptures that I know, prayed, and said, it's impossible, this can't be happening. And he kept doing it, kept doing it, and after a while, I just saw tears from his face dropping on the floor. So I stopped him, and I said, talk to me medically. She said, and he said, she is gone. Six o'clock, we were fine. About 6.35. As in six o'clock, we were talking. Not aided, nobody was helping her to do anything. We were conversing. And as at 6.35, Sheep, sheep, sheep. It was gone. 
the following day, when Dukwe called me, I was about to take him to Sebo. I was about taking my children to to school when he called me. So when he called me, that uh, I think we woke up this morning and I think your sister's health is deteriorating. That was the exact word he used. And I just told my wife, I'm sorry, I won't be able to take the children to the hospital. I won't be able to take the children to school. Please kindly do this. I need to rush down to Shion's place. Dupe Olu just called me. This was Shion that I spoke with the day before. Held her. Called her name. Shook her. She didn't respond. Her brother came, screamed, prayed. We took her to we took her to the hospital, um, hoping against hope, believing that it's not possible. Called so many people. Raise prayer points. And at the general hospital, they told us he's brought him dead. I got a call from the pastor. He said, what do I want to do now? He said, I want to take her to the mortuary. They said, no. We drove down to church. We pray for another one hour or thereabout or more. And um, and when there was nothing, I I told the pastor that I'm serving God, not Baal. It won't take forever if God still wanted her to be here. So I said, this lady is too precious to me. I don't want anything to happen to her body. I just want her body to be intact. And so we went to the mortuary. Again, when we got to the military mortuary, we decided to go to the emergency hall again so that doctor can check her and that this can't be happening. It's not possible. They said she's gone. She's gone. We have to take her to the mortuary. And I can remember a brother screaming, calling her name and saying, Olua Shion, get up. You can't go in there. It's dead people that they take there. Get up. Get up. And there was no response. But on my way to school, when I got to that empire side, was when my husband called. He said, the doctor said that medically, she was gone. You know, it didn't even sink. That's why the fact that I work in a hospital. I said, what do you mean by that? He said that was what the doctor said. I said, God forbid. I reject it. I refuse to believe that news. I lost composure. The only time I ever wept when someone died was when my father died. And I, I wept. I wept. After that, the only person that has made me weep and I wept days on end, asking God questions, was when she went she won't pass down. And it was for the fact that I saw her lay on the floor, lifeless. We took her from place to place, whether they could, she could be resuscitated in a hospital. We took her to church to pray for her. You know, what you can do for a loved one to be brought back, we did all that. And we waited for several hours thinking something would happen. But, you know. So I had to quickly call a sister hospital, Randu General Hospital, 
to get a ambulance, a doctor and a nurse over to them, which they did. I told my husband, don't listen to anybody, even Pastor D. Don't listen to him. Just take Sheon straight to Randall. And they took her to Randall. Later, about um, 30 minutes later, Pastor D called me. And he said, uh, you know that um, we are believers, but at the same time, we need to let the will of God. I said, Pastor D, I refuse to hear that. And I told him, I said, but you're a pastor, sir. I refuse that news. I reject it. Pastor Yemi to call me in the morning and ask me that he needed me to follow him somewhere to pastor's house. And I said, well, said just let's go. So I just hopped into his car. And along the way, he was saying, hey, uh, we're not sure, but it seems something has happened to pastor's missus. <laughs> I, just, I just brushed it aside. I mean, I, 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 I believe maybe it was something that was redeemable. So on our way, he started giving a little bit more information as to what has happened. But again, we both in the car started rejecting it. But I was still in, in, in a state of stupor because, I mean, I couldn't still relate it. My last image of her was the whining and dining that we had in the church and, and then telling me this this morning. So we were just praying, I mean, till we got to... Um, I think we drew a leg bar or so, and then pastor said um, they, they left the house to Yaba, and then that was where we went to meet them. August 11th, my husband told me Kemi has been trying to reach her. If Kemi is trying to reach you, then that means she wants to talk to you, not me. Pick her call, just speak with her. So I was upstairs in my room. Then my husband came up. By the time she, he was approaching the bedside, he just shouted, ah, and threw the phone away. So I quickly picked the phone. My daughter was on my own phone with me, so I just told her to cut the phone. And then I picked the call and I started, because he couldn't say anything. He was just shouting, ha, ha. So I now picked the call and I said, Kemi, what happened? What did you tell him? Then she now told me that um, she just... I was on leave. I went to the market that day and I had things in my hand. So I saw the call and I was like, oh, I'll call this person back later. And another 30, 45 minutes after that, I got another call. Now, the second person is someone whose calls I don't like to miss because it, he had a health challenge around that time. So anytime he called, I was always a bit agitated. And the first person and the second person lived in the same vicinity. So I started to panic, like, Oh, she's called before, he's calling now, what's going on? So at this point, I drop everything. Then I pick his call and it says, where are you? I said, I'm at home, I just got home now. I went shopping and um, he said, sit. So I sit, I said, what's going on? Are you ill? What, what is there? So he said, no, I'm fine, I'm fine. I said, show a debanjo is there. I said, it's not possible. She can't die. It's not possible. It's just not possible. Today is my birthday. Exactly a year ago, this time a year ago, we we're together. You know, they had a surprise party for me. She was full of life. She can't die. She wasn't ill, like, so. And of course, I started screaming and screaming and screaming. But all that time, I didn't realize that. Um, Maybe people had been trying to tell me somehow, but nobody could just get a hold of me, I don't know. But he was now the one I was able to talk to. I said, but I've not heard it from Pastor Dukwe, so it can be true. He said, but his brother has posted it on a platform. I said, I don't care. He has to tell me she was dead first before. So then I call him and he said, yes, it's true, she's gone. I said, okay, you know, I'm, let me start coming. He said, I shouldn't bother coming. I was like, all of this is not even making sense. She is dead and you say I shouldn't bother coming. Like, where else will I be? So I was at 12, um, one of the team leaders in the department fixed a meeting on, on Teams, which was the application we used for communication. So during the meeting, I saw um, some of our bosses in South Africa. I saw some of our bosses, some of our, some of our colleagues. And 
I was now wondering what exactly is the issue? What exactly? Because the, the title of the meeting was like emergency something. I can't really remember. So I was like, what exactly is the issue? So when um, we were about to start the meeting, the bosses on the call were not too sure of who to start the meeting. So somebody said, um, Timaj, start the meeting. Timaj said, um, Shola, start the meeting. Shola, so I think at some point, somebody was able to gather confidence and then start, started the meeting. So at that point, the person was like, um, this, that, God has, um, there's a time for everything. What exactly are you going to say? What exactly is the issue? So at that point, they mentioned Shewa Debajo passed on this morning. I was just, I was, I was lost. My wife was in the sitting room with me. I was in the dining tent to work. Immediately I heard that news. I was just lost. I had to put my head on my table. I, do, I don't even know how to communicate to, to my wife. I was like, this is not possible. So I had to call her, please come. I cannot just tell you, this. just come over and come and listen to this thing yourself. Immediately she came over, she heard it. She was also confused. She started crying and then she went inside. So the, the very next day, <clears throat> of course I had to go, go over to their house. And I went, went with my husband. And then um, we have our old girls um, group, our WhatsApp group. One of them got the message somehow. But I, I just, I was not brave enough to send the message. She was the vice president of the, of the group, of the association. So, so everybody, of course, on the group knows Buki will have, be the one to have the answer. So they kept asking and sending messages. They just saw something. They just saw something. What happened? Buki talked to us. I just, I couldn't see anything. At the point, I had to go offline until I got to their place. And um, I remember I got to the front of the house. And I saw, I saw Ara. I saw Niyi. And I saw Tunji. And I remember the look on their faces. So I knew. And then as I was coming, Ara stretched out her hands to hug me. And she said, we're going to get through this together, OK? And I think that's when it dawned on me that Shewu is not just gone. Somebody has spoken to her. Like, when did? Was I in another planet when all of this happened? You know, so I was just like, let, let me go upstairs and talk to your dad first so that I can really get the details. Because it looked like she wasn't just gone, the world had accepted it. And I wasn't going to have it yet. So I went upstairs. By the time I got upstairs, I saw her colleagues in the living room. I looked around. I've, I've experienced loss before, so I know how, once you just see the setting, you know it's true, right? 6 a.m. 11th August, I came round. I saw my sister, Shion's mother, lying on the bed next to me. And I, I called her. She woke up. She said, ah, congratulations. Welcome back, this, this, this. And then she started preparing to do all the needful, that is to clean me up, do everything. So all I know is they took my sister away, that she couldn't take care of me. I didn't know something drastic had happened. For one week, I did not see anybody. I started crying. No member of the family is coming to check how far I'm improving. I've been going in and out, that is into coma. You know, thinking, I didn't know what happened. I just felt everybody abandoned me. Then this particular day, Tunde came. I said, Tunde, enjoy so for me. Kila sheti moshe. Kilo de ti bo bebi sa for me. Kilo de mi reni koko. I said, especially the Ade Banjos. I said, I didn't see Dukwe Olu. I didn't see Sheun. Why? Tani moshe, ejo. So they just look at me like this. So they said, I 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 said, I
I didn't know they were going through hell. I did not know. I was just crying for myself that they abandoned me. I didn't know she passed. Until the day when I was to be discharged, my church man and they seized my phone. They left me in communicado. I cannot communicate with anybody. So when I saw my church people, I thought they sent to them to come and pray for me and rejoice with me. I didn't know they arranged them to come and pray. She was passing. She did not wait to see my victory. She prayed for my victory. She prayed that I would testify to the goodness of God with my own mouth on the land of the living. And I have been doing that. But she did not wait to share this victory with me. God. I can't question God. I thought I would see you. Immediately, they discharged me and hug her. It was um, quite devastating to me. Um, maybe, maybe close to when my 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 mom died. She is a woman of strange faith. Her faith. You can't cut it. She passed that to me. And for that, I am grateful. Because I can also claim to be a woman of faith. My faith is what is holding, holding me till today. And I hope God will abide with me. She'll miss you. I miss your comfort. I miss your sense of responsibility. She was highly responsible to everybody in the family. Everybody. When I say everybody, I mean everybody. She will take your battle as her own battle in prayers. Ah. You know why I'm happy? She knew God. The beautiful testimony in her last moment and everything that was shared at the, the burial service. And I had to turn back in the church and I looked at the crowd and I was like, hmm. And testimony of the crowd of people that were there that day showed you that she lived right. It's until her death that I know our words in office. When we got here that day, we were outside for like an hour. We couldn't come inside. She will push me again that, no, we have to go in. I'll tell her I can't go in. After a while, we came in. Like the frost on a rose Winter comes for us all Oh, how nature We are celebrating the life of a godly woman, a mother, a sister, and a leader like in our midst. I've been buried to grow for your promises, Lord. Believers don't mourn because we know we go through a transition. She has entered into eternal glory and she's with Jesus, what? Face to face. Though the winter is long, even richer, the harvest it brings. Though my waiting prolongs even greater, your promise for me like a seed. Now 
Sister, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for the things that have been written concerning her. And we dare say, Lord, that by your grace, she has been able to run her race. Father, we thank you. We worship you. We give you praise for your life that she has been. this morning, that your presence will be visible. celebrate the life of our dear sister, mother, pastor, banker, professional, and many things. My life, my strength, my soul. What I am saying, dear brothers and sisters, is that our physical bodies cannot inherit the kingdom of God. These dying bodies cannot inherit what will last forever. But let me reveal to you a wonderful secret. We will not all die, but we will all be transformed. She succeeded. She brought calm to anxious waters. No doubt, we knew she had a life outside of work, but she adopted us in the office as her second family. She came into the family, and from the moment she came in, she treated everyone, old, young, nuclear, or extended, with the love that you could only imagine you could barely describe. I'm grateful to God that she was my sister for 40 years. I'm going to miss her. I'll miss her. I'll miss her. But I love you. She is always full of laughter. You know, you know that her, her laughter is infectious. It is full. It is rich. We will call you mama. You will say no. Don't call me that. But regardless, you mothered us. And we heard it in your voice. We saw it in your eyes. And she said, Afola Shayo, Ara Oluwa. We knew that this woman was the woman balancing everything well. Oluwa Shen Ruth Adubanjo. Her name was the testimony that foran the life she lived. Welcome to your realm. The final question is, where will you spend eternity? Looking at all the testimonies of those who had contact with our sister, her joy, her faith, her quiet confidence in her God. Oluwaseun Ruth Adebanjo. The last words that Sheun spoke was, I choose life. Repeatedly, not knowing, we didn't know that she was choosing life eternal in our God and our Savior. An appointment. One day, all of us need appointment. Whether we live for 10 years, 20 years, 100 years, there's an appointment. Good night, good night, good night. Good night. But we shall meet in the morning. I believe that my season will come. Your promise for me like a sea.